Good morning, everyone. Last class, as you'll recall, we talked about how a business forms, usually with a sole entrepreneur or perhaps a partnership of one or two individuals. In a very small company, as you remember, we talked about how everyone in the company has pitches in and does everything that needs to get done. If you were to talk to an individual who had started their own business, you'd find they probably describe their job as everything from janitor to CEO. As a company grows, however, they need to define the roles, the responsibilities, the authority that flows through the organization. A way needs to be found to delineate the various tasks that need to be done in the business, who's going to do them, who reports to whom about those tasks and responsibility. And that's the subject matter for today's discussion, organizational structure. Today we're going to talk about two types of organizational structure, the functional and the divisional structure. We'll talk about them, we'll describe them, define them, talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages, or more than just advantages and disadvantages, but when they make sense to be, uh, a business makes sense to be described in those terms, or structured in those terms. After we do that, I'm going to uh, describe to you your homework assignment where you'll actually be able to put some of this knowledge to use and then report back next class uh, and discuss it further. So again, the two structures that we're going to talk about today are functional and divisional. Functional structure would look like this. This individual is the CEO, stands for Chief Executive Officer. This individual might go by other titles, President, Manager, Chief Operations Officer, but at any rate, this is the individual who is in charge of the whole business. Everything reports up to this individual, or as President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, the buck stops here. organizational structure, reporting to the CEO are the various business disciplines or business areas. So we might have finance, human resources, HR, and let's say this is a manufacturing company. Operations might be another function. And let's try marketing. Again, you can have any number of functions. It really depends on what's important to the business and what types of activities occur in the business. But we'll use these four as an example. Finance, HR, operations, and marketing. So anything that is work that is accomplished or done within the organization is done functionally, everything to do with finance, everything to do with HR. So HR, for example, is going to hire across the company. Everyone who's hired is going to be hired. That function is happening here in HR. And they all report then up to the CEO. Okay? Divisional works a little differently. We still have our CEO. organized by divisions. So let's say Division A, Division B, and Division C. 
Then, under each of these divisions, we have the functional areas. So again, I'm just using a few as examples. So each of these divisions would have HR. Each might have finance. And each might have operations. So what makes these divisions? How have we divided the work in a divisional organizational structure. These are divided in one, usually one of three ways. One is by product. So for example, many large companies you, you know of, such as Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson's, might have household products, medical products, uh, and perhaps uh, they do household, they do medical, and they might do um, products they use in industry. Or uh, if you think of a drug company, it might be organized around different drugs. So drugs for antibiotics, drugs that are for pain relief, drugs that are for chemotherapy and cancer treatments. That would be product divisional. Some are around customers. So again, the divisions might be retail, you and I, consumers, wholesale, selling to other businesses, and perhaps the government as a third customer. Another way they can be grouped is around geographics. So you might have domestic customers, European customers, Asian customers. So, the basic difference between the two, you think of it this way, functional are around the business inside, things that are happening in the company, the business tasks. A divisional structure is formed around more of a customer focus, whether the customers are around different products, things that are sold to customers, the customers themselves, or where the customers are located. So advantages and disadvantages. Why would an organization decide to choose one or the other of these structures? In the function, functional, excuse me, in the functional structure, everyone is an expert in their own area. It allows each of these areas to really have in-depth knowledge, to keep current, really focus on that area. So they really become subject matter experts. Anything that happens within the organization that has to do with finance, this is the go-to go function. This is where the, that expertise is. Everyone has very clear-cut roles. It's very defined. If I have a question about marketing, this is where I will get an answer. This can also reflect and be a disadvantage, however, if each of these functional areas and the individuals working in there develop a silo, put on blinders, so that they don't understand or pay attention to what's happening across the organization. So that can be a disadvantage in this type of a structure. It works best in a simpler, more stable environment. So for a company that is perhaps making one or two products, selling them in a limited area or to one or two large customers, then this structure works very well. Everyone knows what they're doing. Everything runs smoothly. There's not a lot of change. Makes a good functional structure. In the divisional structure, on the other hand, there is a lot of ability 
to respond very quickly, to be very diverse. Each area can tailor their expertise to the product or the customer that they are serving. So that's a major advantage for the divisional structure. <clears throat> Disadvantages for this type of a structure are that you are duplicating various functional areas. So it tends to be more costly. Having three human resource departments as opposed to one is more expensive for the company, usually. Another disadvantage to the divisional structure happens really at the top management level. They have competing interests that they have to balance as they make business decisions. So very, they could, for, uh, for example, be faced with a decision that would be very good for Division A, but detrimental to Division B. So as a management team, they have to learn to balance those different uh, operations. The main point, I think, is that you want to keep in mind is that each of these structures is best, works best, when it matches the business strategy of the organization. And that's really what we'll start to delve into next week when we talk about the various business strategies that organizations develop. It'll relate back, I think you'll see very easily, will be able to relate back how the structure supports the strategy. Any questions? All right. What we're going to do now is move on to describe your homework assignment. Um, so if you would uh, just take out uh, a moment, I'll uh, be handing out your homework assignment. And you'll have an opportunity, as I said, to find examples of these organizational structures and then to discuss them uh, next class.